students here at school, we want you to know that we're still here to support you in any way that you need. We're going to start off today's presentation by hearing from Mr. Todd Crandall from Dockton. Thank you. Good afternoon, seniors. Um, out of my element right now, just as you probably are at this time. But uh, what I'd like to do is focus on the end of the year, and it's hard to do that sitting here in September to think about what's happening in May. And I know it's, it's difficult. But putting on a, a graduation ceremony is like putting on a wedding for 300 plus people. There's a lot of uh, T's to cross, I's to dot, and things like that. We want to make sure it goes off without a hitch. It's a very formal ceremony. And so we start planning now so it, it goes very smoothly and, and kind of lowers that stress level, if you will. You're going to receive an email and probably some information in the mail that will direct you to our website at jostens.com and allow you to place your cap and gown order and order some other things during this window of time, September 16th to October 7th. When you get to the website, one of the first things you'll see are some of the packages that we offer. The most prominent package will be the RAM package. The nice thing about the RAM package is it's one-stop shopping, and there's some value in it, too. Um, it usually uh, is a package that fills all the, the uh, wants and needs for families. It doesn't fit everyone's needs. What we want you to do over the next few days is sit down with somebody who's has been through graduation before, an older brother or sister, a parent, somebody who's been there and done it, so you can have some guidance on what those needs and wants are. Some of you may just want to keep it simple and just order a cap and gown. Some of you may want to go full send and order one of everything. So I want you to sit down and figure out what best fits your family's needs. I'm going to talk about some fun parts of graduation today, and I'm going to talk about some formal parts of graduation. Usually seniors get into the fun part of graduation, and the parents get into the formal part of graduation. Top of the list for the formality are the caps and gowns. When you put in your measurements for your caps and gowns, I want you to be cognizant and, and take your time in filling it out. I want you to know that, that uh, that a gown is designed to fit about mid-calf length. And sometimes um, ladies will panic and think, well, I don't know what length of heel I'm going to wear in the spring. It's only September now. I can't forecast what I'm, I'm wearing in May. And we get that. But no matter if you're wearing stilts or flats, that gown is going to come to the same length. So I want you to do some measurements of your height and weight. Uh, based on, on just wearing those flats and, and not taking in, in account those other variables that, that, uh, that can happen in May. What we want is some accurate measurements. We don't want any instances like this. We don't want the gown too short. We don't want it too long. With accurate weights, we get a proper drape of the gown so the gown isn't too tight or too big. As long as you get the information in on time and accurately, that gown will, will come in and, and fit you appropriately. With all the gowns, all of the gowns come with a regular tassel, but sometimes students like to add a little personal style to their tassels, some individual uh, style, if you will. Or sometimes parents have special uh, um, displays that they put up in the home, and sometimes they want to order an extra tassel. So those are some of the, the tassels that you'll see available that you can add to your order if you choose. Graduation is typically about you. As you walk across the stage, the flash bulbs go off, and that's your moment in the sun. But it's also about the important people in your life, your parents, those people that nurtured you and guided you over the last 13 years. They want to be a part of this as well. They usually shout from the mountaintops, letting people know what a good job that they've done over the last 17 and 18 years. And so they want to be a part of the process, too. And that doesn't happen by accident. Usually moms tuned into that formality part of graduation. And uh, one of the, the things that, that she's tuned into a lot of times are the graduation announcements. And I'll talk about those in just a moment. Um, one of the, the things that I experienced this year as both a parent and a Jostens representative is that 
my youngest uh, student of four uh, graduated this year. And uh, as, as a parent, it saddened me because he has three sisters that experienced graduation as it's supposed to be uh, experienced, uh, normal, if you will. This year was a little bit different, but we made the most of it. And I'm proud of him and his classmates that, that did what they could to make that year close out a, as they hoped it would. Um, it had a little bit different look, but they still celebrated um, with all the fanfare. As late as August, we sent out graduation announcements actually uh, in June when, when things started to come together and put together a, a, a graduation party to recognize his, his achievement. And not only including family and, and friends, but his close group of friends. And we were able to put it all together and, and have those important people in his life. Well, in talking about a graduation announcement, that, that group of people, that core group of people, friends and family members of not only you, but your parents is who you would send out a graduation announcement to. Um, it shows a special connection. It's more personal than throwing something out uh, on Facebook. It shows that, that special bond. And this is what the graduation announcement looks like for you this year. I'd like to thank some students here at school that came together this summer and helped put together the graduation design that they thought best represented your class. Again, it's a, it's a formal version of a, an announcement, like a birthing announcement or a wedding announcement. It, uh, it highlights special moments in your life or milestones, if you will. A lot of times we find families want to personalize that announcement a little bit. And one of the ways to do that is by incorporating this photo card. The nice thing about the photo card is that you can incorporate some pictures, but you can also put some key information in there, such as what you plan on majoring next year, what, what uh, school you plan on attending, or maybe you plan on going into the workforce or maybe in, even the military. Those items can be placed on this card. I don't need that information in this window uh, of ordering over the next couple weeks. You will download that in the spring. We just need to reserve these cards and then you'll customize them in the spring. There's even an area to put in a, 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 an invitation. If your parents plan on having a graduation party, they can put that information in there as well. So that's the formal part of graduation. Those cards and uh, stationary typically come in the spring of the year. Some of the fun items you'll get in as soon as 10 days. And some of the items that I want to talk about include some of the items that you see here. The black t-shirt we've had for about 15 years. Some schools with less resources than we see around the Chicago metropolitan area came to us about 15 years ago and asked us if they could, if we could help them put together a t-shirt. And what they wanted was a black design to kind of celebrate those blackout days and also have it a, a, a dual purpose as a, as a senior t-shirt. So the, the tradition stuck. We've carried that black t-shirt for the last 15 years or so. The design obviously changes every year. Last year, our marketing department talked to some students and they convinced us to introduce the Sherpa. That was very popular last year. Uh, the, Hoodies are always popular. This one happens to be the per, uh, performance material. And lastly, the two-pack t-shirt is some variety in value. Um, for an extra $5 or so, you add that to the the uh, t-shirt the price, you get the second shirt. So that's the value in, in variety in the two-pack. If you haven't had a chance to, to order a class ring yet, um, our website is a great place to go to select a design that commemorates your experiences, not only the last four years, but the culmination of your 13 years. Again, we get student input all the time, and at the top of the page here, you'll see a new design called the Class Band, and it, it really rocked us last year. A lot of students gravitated towards that new band, and so it's a contemporary twist on class rings. There are a lot of choices to choose from, the nice thing about going to our website is you get some visibility. When you design that, that piece, you'll get to see what it looks like before you place that order. Some questions usually pop up when, when submitting or, or about to submit 
your graduation orders. One is, is um, at the beginning of the year, because there, there's such a long time frame between now and graduation, do I have to pay for everything all at once or can I spread it out? And the answer is you can put a deposit down and break it up a little bit or pay for it in one lump sum. The choice is yours. Usually that's a, that's a parent conversation. When do I get these items? As I said, some of those apparel items and keepsake items will ship within the next 10 days right to your home. The stationary items will come in in March and then finally we'll wrap up uh, with the cap and gown towards the, towards the end of the year. What if I'm credit deficient and things look a little iffy for graduation? What should I do? Should I wait until I find out? Again, we're all about reducing the stress levels. We'd rather have you order now, and if you came up short at the end of the year with credits, we will refund that cap and gown in full. So get that information in and then worry about the, the academic part of it as you close out the year. We're, we're in touch with students all the time uh, in, in what we do, and we ex we're excited about it. And I connect with students on many different levels. I would like you to connect with me if you can at, at this area and share your stories over the, the course of the year. If we see some stories that we like, we're gonna repost them on a, on a national wide basis. And as we close out the year, we give a lot of, uh, away a lot of great prizes. So it's a great way for us to, to stay in the loop and, and see how your year progresses. And then finally, as a reminder, you'll get an email and some items in the, in the uh, mail. So watch your uh, mailbox and email box and look out for that information on how to place your order. And the time frame again is from today till October 7th, okay? I look forward to helping you in any which way I can to help you close out the year the way you envisioned it. Um, right now, I, I know it seems kind of sketchy, but I know you, you'll, you'll make the best of it. If there are any questions that arise, again, our email information will have a way for you to contact us and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. I'll turn it back over to Stephanie. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you can see, I'm live here in the, uh, in the theater, and I'm monitoring uh, what is going on in the chats from you guys being at home. Uh, there's some inappropriate chatting going on. I would appreciate it if that stops immediately. Just know that we are taking attendance here. We know your names. We know what, you're, what, what is being typed in the chats. I'm appreciating it right now. Please stop. Please pay attention, and we will uh, continue on with the presentation. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to get started on our presentation of Life After GCHS. Um, for those of you who don't already know me, my name is Mrs. Rossi. I'm one of the counselors in the guidance department. Um, Mr. Goldman is also one of the presenters for today. Um, so we'll be covering all the information about life after GCHS and how to prepare for your, co your college careers or any choice that you guys have. So just reintroducing our counseling staff. We have six counselors. So there's Mr. K, myself, Mrs. Mitchell, who's also our guidance department chair, Mr. Goldman, Ms. Casillas, Mrs. Prisnowski, and then we have two fabulous support staff in Ms. Marquardt, she's our college and career um, assistant, as well as Mrs. McGee, our counseling secretary. So obviously, if you guys have any questions at any time, um, you can always email or call, or a lot of us have Google Voice numbers that you can contact as well. So let's all just take a deep breath and review. Um, I know with the pandemic, there's a lot of questions, a lot of um, myths and things flying around. We just want to make sure that you guys have some of the facts today so that you can proceed accordingly. So as we know, life has changed. We're in the middle of a pandemic and a lot of things are really unpredictable right now. But what we want you guys to know that is predictable is our support for you um, as the students at Grays Lake Central. 
Um, we understand that a lot of your future goals may be impacted by economic factors or inability to visit colleges or your own health concerns or family health concerns. Um, a lot of us have already attended webinars, um, state articulations, and colleges are adjusting and working with students and with families. Um, a lot of the schools are offering virtual tours. Um, some of the campuses are still offering one-on-one -on -one on campus tours. So they're doing whatever they can to provide you for the most up-to-date information on their campus while still make sure that you and your family are safe. So one of the biggest changes um, for colleges here is most colleges are either test optional or test blind, meaning that you will not be penalized for not sending your scores in. So if you, um, when you get your scores, you can decide to send them or not send them. Um, some of the schools, once you decide to send them or not to send them, you have to stick with that decision, so you can't decide later on. Some schools are flexible, so it's just up to you to make sure that you're checking with your specific schools um, to make sure that you know what they're expecting of you. So we want you to choose your own path. It's really important that you are choosing the college, the career, the job that you want after high school, and that it's your own. Not your friends, not your boyfriends, not your parents, but your own. So there's a number of options out there available to you. So there's two-year colleges, like your CLC, Harper, Oakton, and Kirkwood. Um, we have other four-year universities out there, like ISU, U of I, Purdue, Bradley. And then there's a number of apprenticeship programs, like construction industry, um, the Lake County JATC, or the Plumbers Apprenticeship Program. Um, there's also options to join the military. Um, there's a lot of online virtual tours um, to meet with the Army, the Navy, the Marines, the Air Force, so whatever your choice may be. Or for some of you, it might be to choose the workforce. So there's a lot of support here through our program and through our CTE program as well that can help you get on track in choosing um, the right path for work. So why post-secondary education? Um, this is just a graph that we like to show you, basically just um, giving you a snapshot of what a high school diploma does, what a college diploma does, an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and just telling you the earnings by schooling. So as you can see, um, it's really important to get a high school diploma. The amount that you earn just by having a diploma um, raises significantly from not having a high school diploma. Same thing with having a, some sort of college degree, whether that's an associate's, a bachelor's, a master's. So we want you guys to choose a path that's appropriate for you that's gonna help you to reach your future goals. So the jobs and colleges that are trending, we also always like to give you guys a little bit of an idea of the colleges that our seniors from last year chose. So on the left-hand side are the colleges that, um, the top 10 colleges that our seniors attended last year. So, Top of the one is College of Lake County, then we have U of I, Illinois State, University of Missouri, and so on. Um, and then a lot of the high earning trade jobs that are available right now, um, elevator installer repair, radiation therapist, dental hygienist, diagnostic medical sonographer. So all of these options are available to you and we just wanted to give you information um, so that you can choose the best path for you. So again, we talked a little earlier about myths. Um, I know we hear things in the news, we hear things maybe from our friends or via social media, and we just wanna make sure that we're clarifying some of these myths for you. Um, so one of the big ones is I have to pick a major before I can apply. That is absolutely not true. Um, most schools, you're doing a lot of gen ed education requirements your first and second year. So most schools will have you pick a major by the end of your sophomore year. There are some select schools and select programs that you do need to know your major going into those, um, but usually through the programming they tell you that and through the application process it's a little bit different. Um, colleges only accept the best students and I'll never make it. Um, again, not true. There are thousands of colleges out there and what may be a really good fit for one student may not be a good fit for another student. So that's why we really stress making sure that you are choosing the path that is best for you. Um, there's only one college that will make me happy. Again, there's thousands of colleges out there. We really want you guys right now to be um, logging on to our college visits through the College and Career Center, um, hopping on to Naviance and signing up to virtual tours for school 
because as you can see, there's a lot of colleges with a lot of great opportunities out there. So we want to make sure that you're picking the one that makes you happy. Um, In-state colleges are always the cheapest opinion or option, I'm sorry. Um, and again, that's not true. Um, yes, while some state schools might be cheaper, um, a lot of the private schools and liberal arts schools also um, have very good sticker prices. Um, they're, the reason why a lot of times they can be cheaper than some of the state schools um, is because they have larger endowments and people that are giving money to the school. So oftentimes they can offer different types of scholarships that public education cannot. All my peers have a plan and I'm the only one feeling lost. Again, like I said, we can sit and compare ourselves all day long and things are never going to add up to the way that we want them to be. So it's important that you talk to your counselor, reach out to us, and we're here to help support you all along the way. If you are feeling lost, it's okay. Um, specifically right now, there's a lot of different things to focus on, and we understand that. Um, so, you know, you may be at home dealing with different factors, and this may be on the back burner right now, but anytime you're ready and ready to get started, we're here to support you. Um, your your Counselors are actually in the next couple weeks and stuff going to be meeting with you. So be on the lookout for Zoom invites from your counselors um, to go over your post-secondary plans and make sure that we get everybody going and up and started. So real talk about transition. These are just a couple of articles that we encourage you guys to look at. They, they're real talk from colleges, from students, from parents about, you know, talking about high paying trade jobs sit empty while school grads line up for universities. Um, talking about changes in colleges due to the coronavirus. And that, you know, college admissions offices are reading your tweets. So we talk a lot about, uh, you know, your social media and your digital footprint. Um, a lot of colleges are watching your Instagram feeds and things like that to make sure that you're a student that they want on their campus. So please make sure um, via social media that you are acting appropriately and responding in a way that you want to reflect yourself to others. So this is just a little snapshot we wanted to show you about time management. I know a lot of people are feeling overwhelmed sitting in class for eight periods in a day. I know we have a little adjustment now with the block scheduling. Um, but in a college, you're not going to be sitting in class for eight hours a day. You might have class on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a couple hours, or maybe Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever format you decide to sign up for. So time management is going to be really important um, post high school. So we really want you guys to be working on that now as you're managing your classes, your applications, your homework, um, your responses to teachers, even your parents. So it's good practice to get started doing that now because you're going to have a lot of free time in college that if you don't get started on that paper or that next project, um, you're going to fall behind. So some factors in finding the right fit. There's a lot of considerations to take in when you're considering looking at a college. It's an expensive investment, um, but it's like a second home for a lot of people. So we want you to make sure that you're considering the location. Are you a homebody and somebody that doesn't like to be too far away from, from your family? Um, or are you somebody that can be, you know, three to five hours away? Or are you okay with being a plane ride away and being able to come home only on some of the larger breaks? So those are some things to keep in mind when looking for your college. Um, facilities, you know, dorm life. Do freshmen have to stay on campus their first year? Can you live in apartments? Um, are there different food options? Do you have food allergies and things like that that need to be considered? Can you bring a car to campus? Do you need a car? So um, facilities is another thing to consider. Also the size of a school. Um, so there's a lot of colleges out there that are the same size of Grays Lake Central. Are you looking for something bigger like an ISU or something even bigger like a U of I or a Madison with 30 to 40,000 students? So, you know, with some of those smaller schools, there's some of that more one-on-one -on -one attention. Um, with the larger schools, you might be sitting in larger um, venues where you're being taught by the, the professor or the TA. So it's whatever works best for you. Please just take those things into consideration. 
Also making sure the school has your major. Um, I know a lot of times kids are like, oh, I'm going to this school. I really love it. My parents went there. My cousins went there. And then I'm like, well, what do you want to do? And they're like, well, I want to do this. And well, unfortunately, they don't have my major. So making sure that they have your major or second choice major available um, so that you don't have to end up jumping around to schools if you don't have to. Additional factors are activities. Are you somebody that wants to participate in Greek life? Do you want to be in a fraternity or sorority? Um, do you want to play Division I, II, or Three athletics? Or are you more interested in club activities? Um, are there co-ops or internships that, once you get into your major, will be available to you? Um, I know a lot of kids are really interested in studying abroad. Does the school have the study abroad program and the places that you want to visit? Um, along with that diversity, making sure that there's cultural diversity, um, male to female, like LB LGBTQ community or political, religious, and socioeconomic um, groups that you can become involved in. So whatever is important for you, we want you to make sure that you're making a checklist so that you can make sure to check off all those boxes when you're going down your list. And then lastly, considering the cost. I know a lot of times when we're looking at colleges, the first thing we look at is the sticker price. Um, I want to discourage you from doing that. Um, a lot of times after filling out financial aid or looking at grants and things that the schools can give you, those sticker prices really vary. Um, so make sure that you're talking to the financial aid reps at the school as well as your admissions advisors, and they're going to help point you in the right direction. So now I'm going to turn it on over to Mr. Goldman. much Ms. Rossi and great to talk with the class of 2021. Um, to reiterate what she already said, I think we'd certainly miss seeing you around the halls of Grays Lake Central and really do want to continue offering support virtually. So setting up Zoom meetings with us through email, Google Voice number, continue to reach out. We recognize that today's presentation may lead to even more questions that you already came in with. So continue to check in with us. And as we kind of transition into the next part of the presentation, think about it from, from point A to point B is really getting to high school graduation. So Justin started point B to point C is then identifying what path you want to choose. Are you going to go down that path with two or four year colleges? Are you considering starting with joining the workforce or the military? And now we're at the point where, all right, you've decided that, yes, I want to continue my education in some type of formal setting. So is CLC the next step or is a four-year college? And then how do you actually apply to those institutions? So we're going to walk you through this slide, and then I'm actually break away from the presentation and show you how to do some of this materials. So thinking about when you apply to college, back when I applied to Illinois State in, in the mid-90s or late 90s, it was a very simple process. I completed one paper application. It took 15 to 20 minutes, and it was a simple put it in the mail. You guys are tasked with first determining, is it applying through their college website? For example, U of I uses their website to apply to. Some schools, over 900 nationally, use the Common application. So I'm going to show you the Common app, and it allows you to apply to multiple schools using one form instead of going to each individual different website. There's also a more recent application called the Coalition application. There's about maybe 150 members. Uh, we haven't had a, a ton of students use it at Grays Lake Central. There's only a couple colleges nationally that require students to use the Coalition app. U of I is an example of a school that uses it, but also has their own college site. So again, this can be confusing when there's three different websites that you have to potentially navigate through. The next step after you've completed the application is then determining a transcript release form. So you will submit one for each college to which you're applying to. And again, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. There is about a 10-day turnaround. So be a pen, pay, paying attention to deadlines. Um, there are sometimes several hundred requests coming into Ms. Marquette and our College Re Career Center with transcript forms. And uh, po the popular deadlines tend to be early on, November 1st, November 15th, December 1st. So if she gets 200 requests the day before on Halloween, there's no way that we can facilitate sending those electronically in a day's time. So just be aware of that 10-day turnaround time. There is a link on our College and Career Center page and also in Naviance that I will show you to make it very, very simple. In the past, this was a paper form that you would fill out and have a parent sign. Now it's all done digitally through a Google form. We will talk about some uh, needs for self-report schools. There are colleges, for example, Illinois State, U of I, University of Iowa, Iowa State, 
that all have students report their grades individually on those websites. So you don't need to send an official transcript in the start. You will get a copy from your counselor and then submit those grades individually within each application. Part of that process is also logging into Naviance. We do link our Naviance program if you use Common App through the FERPA, uh, the FERPA waiver, which I'll show you how to do shortly. And then as we transition on, um, letters of recommendation, we do ask if we are in person that you would talk to your teacher and ask, but under the circumstances, an email, just seeing if they're willing and able to write uh, willing a letter of recommendation for you. It does take about two weeks for completion. If you can imagine, teachers um, are prepping all their Zoom classes and also writing multiple letters of rec. So just be aware that it could take up to 14 days for that teacher to submit. There is a survey in Naviance that gives us some general background information about you. It's about 15 questions. They're short answer and, and pretty brief, so it'd probably take maybe 10, 15 minutes for you to complete. I'll show you how to know, locate that here in a minute. And then following up with the process. So you'll submit it through Naviance. You'll confirm that the teacher has sent. And, and this process will continue largely through first semester and, and possibly into second semester. In the end, you may have to request SAT and ACT scores. We know that seniors are taking the SAT next Wednesday on the 23rd through the school. If you've taken any national SAT or ACTs, you can also send those scores electronically to the individual colleges. And I'll show you a link here again in a minute of how to do that. So I'm going to break away real quick and go into a couple of forms. With the Common Application, the Common App is not going to be required for all students. If you're applying to some of our state schools and to CLC, you may not need to create a Common App. The first step that I would suggest is going to find a college. And you could search by individual name or by state. So I'm going to just put in Illinois. And it will show me that there are 34 schools in Illinois that are members of Common App. And you, what we, we would recommend is if there are two or more schools on your overall list that are Common App schools to go ahead and create an account. Create an account is to the right hand side. I've already done this. So I'm not going to click that tab, but I'm going to log in as a first year student. Put in my email address. and a password. And it brings me to the main Common App page. I'm going to work backwards. There are financial aid resources across the top here that you can click on and it tells you more about financial aid and filling out the FAFSA. One of the first steps you'll do then is search for your colleges. So if I wanted to search, say, Purdue, it will tell me the schools with the name Purdue in it. And I'm going to go ahead and add Purdue University in West Lafayette to my college list. The Common App tab is a general tab that any school that you're utilizing in Common App will receive this information to. So under profile, general demographic name, uh, parents' names, your address, there is a fee waiver at the bottom if you're eligible for a fee waiver so you don't have to apply and pay the application fee. So just be aware that this section can be time consuming. It's just, I don't find any of this information difficult, but it is a process to fill out. And we'd encourage you to start that process sooner than later. There is a family section as well. One of the important steps early on in filling out the Common App is adding Grays Lake Central as your high school. You really can't move forward with a lot of the rest of the application until Central is included. So go ahead and fill out the Grays Lake Central. As you can see, as I scroll down, there are additional questions at the bottom of that page. There's testing that you'll report if you choose to report any of your SAT or ACT scores. An activities list that leads up to 10 activities you can include. So if, if you were really involved, you can list up to 10. If you had four, even if you were a member just for one year as a freshman of a club, please feel free to include that. And then two points I want to mention on the Common App tab is the writing sample. You'll see here the schools that I've added to my list all require the writing samples. And there are seven prompts, which you'll choose one of which to write about. So 650 words is your max. Our suggestion is creating a Google Doc to write this essay prompt. Again, it is general, not geared towards any specific school. And eventually having a, your counselor or an English teacher read through that Google Doc, provide some feedback, and then you can come back in and paste the full essay here into that text box. You'll also notice one of my colleges that I've listed, Purdue, 
requires that I self-report my grades within this Common App. So not all schools are going to require that in Common App, but if you do find one, that's where you'll have your unofficial copy of your transcript and you can go grade by grade and put in the data that's on your official transcript. So that's a quick overview. overview. We will be making a video of the same information that you can watch back. Under the My Colleges tab, there are very important sections as well. So this is now where I'm individually working on each section of the Common App. You'll see Northwestern, Purdue, and University of Michigan are listed, and I'm just going to click on Northwestern. It now highlights in blue, and it's got its own individual section of questions. So it's going to ask me my preferred start term, which would be for most students, fall of 2021. Do I intend to pursue financial aid? And as you scroll down, there's more questions. The other aspects of the questions are especially for highly selective schools, which Northwestern would fall into, they tend to have a supplemental essay specific to that college. So for Northwestern, it's just why Northwestern. And again, it's gonna give you the prompt of what you wanna talk about and make your official statement. These tend to carry a lot of weight in the application process. They wanna see that you're applying to their school for very specific reasons, as opposed to it just being a, a generally well-known academic institution. Uh, a lot of schools are like that. So they wanna see why Northwestern is a good fit for you. Again, there is plenty of support with these essays. Two more parts real quickly in Common App. Under Recommenders in FERPA, this is a required section that we encourage you to do pretty much as soon as you start your Common App application. FERPA stands for the Family Educational Rights Privacy Act, which is a law telling schools we can't release your information without your permission. So we can't just send letters of rec, your transcript to these schools without you authorizing. So you would check that box that you've read, you acknowledge, and then you're given two choices. I waive my rights to review all recommendations or I do not waive my rights and I understand and sign. For the most part, all the students that I've worked with do waive their rights. Colleges expect these letters come confidentially. You can feel comfortable knowing that your teachers are gonna write positive recommendations for you. So you would check that box, you'd hit save and close, which I'm not gonna do at this point, um, and then you would move forward. And you'll see when you do that step, there will be a green checkbox next to recommenders and FERPA on all the colleges. So you don't have to go step by step and put in each one for FERPA, you just have to do it once. And here in a minute, I'll show you how to then link your program with Naviance. Finally, with Common App, it is a little confusing because it is one application, but you are still individually submitting to each school. So if I'm on Purdue, and let's say on October 15th, I'm ready to apply to Purdue, but I don't have my Northwestern statement done, the Common App needs to be completed, and then you would go to Review and Submit. You'll see here a large section of incomplete um, lines. Those would be gone if everything was ready, and it will give you a view PDF of my file for Purdue. You would scan it, you would make sure it's accurate, check a box, and you would go ahead and then submit that application to Purdue. So you'll do that if you have four schools. You'll go to Review and Submit four different times. So I know that was a quick overview of Common App. Again, reach out to your counselors. We'll be making a video to cover this more in detail. I'm gonna sign out and go over to Naviance. So on our website, Naviance is located under Menu, Student Services, Naviance Access. You would go to Student, type in your email. And oh, typed in the wrong one, let's try again. We just reset this password and it was working. So let me see here. Got it. All right, so you know what Naviance looks like. A few things to highlight. Under scholarships, this is a tab that Ms. Marquette updates pretty much daily with any local or national scholarships that you should be aware of. So please, especially as we kind of make the turn into 2021, there are a lot of more local scholarships that will be posted, and these are great opportunities for you. There is the transcript release form as well. So you can see that it's a, a Google Doc. Again, you would do one of these for each school that you apply to. And then college visits are ongoing during e-learning. So a couple of sections just to highlight. Under the colleges tab, I'm applying to. 
you'll see here this blue in the middle is where it says match accounts. We've already done this on our end, but on your end it would be a, a pinkish red box, and it will ask you to come in here, put in your Common App email address, and once you put that in, it's going to say match accounts. So you would just click match accounts. If your birthday and your Common App email address link up, it will match, and all the schools that you've populated into the Common App will then be appear automatically as such here. So University of San Diego, Carthage, Northern Michigan, they will show up on that end. So that's how you would link your Common App. That's how we send letters of rec, any transcripts. So please make sure that step is taken. Under the About Me tab, if you go to My Surveys, Surveys Not Started, there is a letter of recommendation request survey. It's, like I said earlier, 15 questions that just gives us some general background information about you. If there's anything that maybe we're not aware about that you feel are important to include in a letter of recommendation, certainly highlight that here. As you scroll down, you'll see there's an update button. So let's say you have 15 minutes in between Zoom sessions and you can do the first five or 10 questions. Go ahead and populate that, hit update. It will save everything you've done and you can come back and finish the last five at the end. So please take the time to fill this out. It certainly does help your teachers and counselors as we like write letters of recommendation. To actually add a teacher as a re recommender, you would go to Colleges Home, scroll down, letters of rec and it will allow you to add a request so if I'm gonna put in a request for say Miss Bierbauer it's gonna ask me do I want Miss Bierbauer to send to all my schools or specific colleges within my list so if I just say all it makes it pretty easy I type a quick note of thanks hit submit request the reason that you might have to choose specific colleges you might find that you have kind of a clear number one teacher that you want to write your letter and then a secondary good option. Some schools only accept one, so that in that case you would have to specify that I want teacher A to write this letter because otherwise it's going to whoever submits it first is what they're going to receive and we don't want uh, that to be the case. So th those are the situations. If you have two letters and your schools will all accept two or more, then go ahead and just pop in all, all schools. Uh, one thing to note is some schools say up to 10 letters. That is unnecessary. Again, two tends to be enough. You do not need to add your counselor as a recommender on this screen. We'll, we'll take care of that separately when you submit your transcripts. Just real quickly in Naviance, I'm not going to go through line by line, but there is the colleges super match. So under Find Your Fit, you could do a super match and go through location, academics, and mission to help narrow down a list of schools. There are still career interest inventories, some of which you've already done through your classes, but you could do exploring career cultures uh, or career clusters and find more about different pathways to colleges that you might be interested in. So again, um, Ms. Rossi will be making a video for Naviance. I'll be making a video for Common App, and you'll be able to refer back to those at any time. Continuing on, this is again what we looked at with the college and career um, website. So the District 127 transcript release form is both on our website under College and Career Center and in Naviance. So either way gets you to this form and you'll submit one for each school that you apply to. There are some variances to that. So again, the self-report schools, I gave the examples of U of I and the Iowa's and ISU, you would not need to report or send a transcript to them at this point. You would get your unofficial transcript, you would self-report those grades. If you're admitted to that college and you decide to attend there, after graduation in May, you would send a official transcript release form to like a final request and we will go ahead and process that at that point. So then it will verify everything you self-reported. In regards to College Board, you may see that there is a, a request info link. If you lost your scores. So let's say you want to report a score, you're not sure how to get into College Board. Unfortunately, due to confidentiality, we don't have access to that information. We know your score, we can look it up, but we can't necessarily give you your password. So you would have to go request your login through this link and go through College Board or ACT. Um, if one of the schools, so we said earlier, we do rec recommend any time you have two or more colleges that are members of your Common App, go ahead and create one and we'll help you through those steps if you do have questions. Should I ask for a letter recommendation if my school doesn't need one? 
Certainly not. We want to be respectful of your teacher's time. Again, some of the teachers might, for example, if, if you took AP World History or AP US History, they're going to write 20 to 25 letters on top of teaching throughout the day. So if you don't need a school, if, if you're applying to say U of I, Iowa, and CLC, none of those schools require letters of rec, and, and U of I is the one example of a school that won't even read them. So be respectful in those situations. Again, we're starting your seventh semester on Zoom, uh, but some students feel like maybe I'm just applying early and they're only gonna see my junior grades, so does my seventh semester count? The answer is emphatically yes. Um, students certainly will have to send in grades later on. Some of the highly selective schools require a mid-year report, so they will see those grades, and if there is a significant drop-off, or if you were saying going into engineering and you dropped physics your senior year, that could cause problems for admittance. Uh, so much so where maybe even as the second semester senior, students have really fell behind and, and not earned the grades that they're normally. You could receive a call next summer saying your acceptance has been revoked due to a poor performance your senior year. So please continue to work hard. And if you are struggling either electronically or through the virtual sessions with technology issues, let your counselors know so we can help support you. When should you start filling out applications? We would say as soon as possible. Again, we recognize that your letters are going to take a significant, or your essays are going to take a significant amount of time to complete. So go ahead and populate those easy sections that are more straightforward. Just get in that general information because we can always work on your essays over the next month, month and a half. All right, so what are the deadlines and how do they work? With regular decision, it's kind of considered the general time frame for submitting that application. So if a school's final deadline is say January 1st or February 1st, you just have to apply within that time frame to be considered for admission. I put on there the University of Pennsylvania, which is a highly selective Ivy League school, they have about a 7% admit rate. That would be fairly comparable to schools similar to them. Early decision is very different. Early decision you can only apply to one college on and not all schools offer it. The reason that the, sco the schools do it is because it kind of locks you in. It is a binding agreement. If they review your application and say, yes, you are admitted, that you are going to withdraw your other applications and you will attend that school. So it, it gives them some assurances. Right now, with the uncertainty due to COVID, a lot of colleges are scrambling to fill their freshman class and make sure they have enough students on campus. So early decision really helps them because it locks you into that college. As a student, there is some risk involved because it means that if they do say yes, you don't get to see your other scholarship offers from other institutions. Some potential benefit is an increased admit rate. So again, under the UPenn example, they admit about 19% of students through early decision. So it's kind of a, a give and take of how serious you are about that college. Um, certainly this is a discussion that would include your parents and hopefully your counselor. There is an extra portion of that FERPA waiver within Common App if you apply early decision to a school that your parents have to sign to acknowledge. So just know if that's a route you wanna go down, feel free to talk with us for more information. Early action does look a little bit differently. Early action, you can con consider just more of a priority deadline. So no, again, November 1st, November 15th, and December 1st tend to be early action deadlines. It is non-binding, and certainly we encourage students to apply before that date for several reasons. One, it gives you the best chance for admission, especially to competitive programs like nursing and engineering. But two, it, it often tends to be their scholarship deadline as well. So that is an important uh, term to be aware of is early action. Rolling admission is kind of like it sounds. It's just as they make decisions, they roll out answers. So if you apply to Northern Illinois and their committee reviews it in late September, you can hear an answer on a, on a very quick basis. Some schools are 48 hour turnaround time on admission. They're very simple to kind of calculate that yes, the student is admittable and 48 hours later after submitting, you're already admitted. Open admission would be an example of CLC where any student can attend if they choose. There are some language proficiency and math proficiency requirements to start with college level courses, but all students are able to attend CLC. So admissions in the decision making process, what are they evaluating? Well, certainly right now, if schools are going more test optional, your GPA, the rigor of your classes and how you perform in those areas are gonna be essential. Again, SAT, ACT scores you may choose to send. You'll have your test next Wednesday and hopefully have a score sometime in October to determine if you want to submit those or not. The essay and personal statement, 
again, will not be required by all colleges, but if they do require an essay or personal statement, certainly we would encourage you to write one and have it reviewed for extra help. Letters of recommendation can be considered, your activity list and how much leadership you provided through that activity and any type of community service. Demonstrated interest is a term that essentially means, have you shown that college beyond applying that you're interested? So you guys are limited, unfortunately, due to COVID for being on campus, but if they are offering any visit days or attending a virtual session with the college, a Q&A, that does show demonstrated interest. And then looking at outcomes, there are four different pathways you can kind of be. Great news is if you're admitted, unfortunately, students tend to be denied. There also is deferred, which means they need more time to evaluate. So kind of walking through, if you apply to U of I in November and they're just not ready to make a decision, they might defer you to a later date until they're gonna make their, their final decisions on admissions. And then waitlisted is a little bit different. Waitlisted means that you have not been admitted to the class, you are on a waitlist, which could be 10 students, it could be 1,000 students, and you don't know where you fall within it. And in the late spring or even to the summer, if other students that have been admitted decide not to attend, they may call you with a waitlist acceptance, and then you'd have to make a decision at that point if you're gonna continue with that school or not. So real quickly, talking about financial aid here, um, obviously finances is a huge component of college. We know school is very expensive and we wanna make sure we're not putting you in a position to be at significant debt when you graduate. So having some dialogue with financial aid offices, um, for the most part, financial aid comes in two forms. So there's the FAFSA, the free student, the free application for federal student aid. It does open this year after October 1st of 2020. So you can go to the FAFSA website, which is linked there. And what's different this year for the first time is the, the state of Illinois is actually requiring students to complete the FAFSA, even if they're not intending to go to college, or sign a waiver that states you understand that this is a requirement and you are not gonna complete it. So one or the other has to be done for graduation for the class of 2021. We are hopeful that we're gonna be having a financial aid night in the next few weeks where our local representative from a, an organization called ISAC will be doing a presentation similar to this in the evening so your parents can watch. Uh, the FAFSA is primarily based on your parents' taxes and some of the information that they provide through savings accounts. So it is a federal government website, so you don't have to worry about the information being out there. So just be aware that that's, that's coming soon. And through FAFSA, you can qualify for either grants, which are free money that you don't have to pay back, loans, which are an agreement that you would borrow to then return and pay back with interest. So usually six months after graduation, or if you stop attending school prior to graduation, that you would get a monthly bill to pay back those loans. Uh, beyond FAFSA, there is an, uh, another profile called the CSS profile. This tends to be for highly selective schools. That's a little bit more of an in-depth look at the family's financial picture. So if you apply to one of those colleges and you need to do the financial aid profile, just know that, that uh, there is help available as well, and that could be a component of financial aid. What I would say, just big picture with financial aid, is have, di have some dialogue with the offices of financial aid at your college or university. We are again in a very unique time where schools might have a little bit more available to give to a student that they seek is really interested. The worst thing they could do is say no, that they, don't, they can't support you beyond any scholarships they've already offered. But uh, again, if they see that you're really motivated and, and $2,000 one way or the other could make the difference in your attendance, they might be able to work with the families. So beyond that, paying for colleges, again, scholarships I showed you in Naviance, how to locate that information, certainly encourage you to check that regularly. I do find that they tend to increase in just the deadlines towards second semester, so really be keeping an eye out. There are some national searches, FastWeb, College Zone, CapEx, Scholarship America, that you would be able to put a profile in and it will funnel scholarships to your email that might be appropriate for you to apply to. The Midwest Student Exchange Program has been around for quite a while now. It is a partnership with some local colleges in the Midwest to offer discounted rates for Illinois students. This is one of the most highly recruited areas for college or incoming college students in the country. So going to Grays Lake Central or being in the Northwest suburbs, there are a lot of schools that are actively recruiting you guys to attend. And these are discounted ways to find out some possible ways on the savings. 
some scholarship myths. The idea that only straight A's get scholarships is just flat out wrong. Yesterday, we all, the counselor said on a presentation from our local um, public colleges in Illinois, and there are many schools that a 2.75 or above immediately qual you, qualify you for a scholarship. At some institutions, 3.5 or above could lead to full tuition being covered. So uh, again, there's a huge range of students that receive scholarships. So please don't believe just because you don't have straight A's that you can't get one. Um, absolutely apply to those schools and see what they can offer. There's this thought that only one student ends up winning a scholarship, so why bother to fill it out? At our award ceremony every year in May, several students are honored and receive scholarships, so be sure um, to fill out those applications. The amounts are too low, uh, $500, a 1000 if you own 50 k Again, everything does add up. The idea that you have to be an athlete to win scholarships, there can be some athletic scholarships offered, but there's also academic, theater, music, arts. There's a lot of ways where you can receive scholarships. And then going on, so to some of the, this I covered, the, the idea that you have to have is these are myths that are busted. Many of the local scholarships, there's absolutely no connection to GPA. It's an essay that you write, and then a team will evaluate and make the determination on who receives those scholarships. It says out of 100 scholarships that will eventually be added to Naviance, only a handful of will be exclusive for athletes. Sometimes local scholarships only receive two or three applications, so those are good ones. I know, I think going back two years ago, on a Thursday afternoon, Ms. Marquette told me about a, a scholarship for uh, teachers, and there hadn't been any applications, so I talked to one of my students. She filled it out that night because it was due on the Friday, and it was a $2,000 scholarship that she was the only applicant for, and that went right, right into her pocket when it was received. And those scholarships can be used for gas, books, food, so every bit does really help. Some quick events for the fall of 2020. There are um, a significant amount of virtual college exploration going on right now. So a larger organization, the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling, has partnered with StriveScan to offer this virtual fair from September 14th, so earliest week through October 22nd. It is online. Some of the programs are offered during the school day. Some are in the evening. And they kind of tend to vary in form. Some are with individual colleges. Other, others are panels amongst multiple colleges in, say, the same state or just info sessions about essay writing. We also have our college general rep visits that would normally be taking place at the school where you can log in again during the school day or somewhere in the evening. We have partnered with grades like North this year to have those sessions. So please encourage you to check some of those out. And then lastly, starting next week, there will be an opportunity to receive college application and essay help. There are 30 minute appointments that you'll schedule with a counselor or English teacher after school. So normally we would offer these before or after school in our college and career center. This year we're doing them virtually. That is beyond just working with your individual counselor for support during a break or a lunch period that you may have. So these could be later in the evening if you have practice after school and can't do it. Um, I know, for example, I'm going to offer one on Monday nights at 6.30. So that would be an opportunity. Ms. Rush, Mr. Palmer from the English department are also going to be involved. Ms. Prznowski is going to be involved. And then all the counselors are available during the school day. Some quick cum laude information. Cum laude is Grays Lake Central's way of recognizing academic excellence in our senior class. Uh, it has three tiers that is based on GPA and some other capstone work. There are requirements like in the areas of dedication, character, volunteerism, responsibility. So typically that application would be available now and, and kind of ongoing to be reviewed. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we know that volunteer hours are limited. So there, uh, our administration is working on updating the form. And as soon as that's available, it will be pushed out to you guys. We are all on Twitter, so please follow us on Twitter. Um, with that in mind, also be regularly checking your school email. I know many of us are sending messages to our seniors about scheduling times to meet. So it really helps if we can get an email back saying, yes, this time works, or no, this won't work for me. Um, but we do post a lot of information through the community on Twitter as well. And then last but not least, uh, we again, we do thank you for attending. I have a minute to go, so I stayed on time. Uh, the last piece is just uh, this quick tiny URL. So if you go to tinyurl.com backslash 2021 senior assembly, it's a two question last name, first name. And if you fill that out, uh, we really do appreciate you joining us today and look forward to fur further conversations here in the coming weeks. Thanks so much, seniors.